And we are going to welcome our second pair of riders to drop. We have Spencer O'Brien. She is a veteran competitor. She's been to the Olympics twice. She has won five X Games medals. And this past year, she was the star of Precious Leader Woman, in which she connects with her heritage as a member of the Haida Kwakwa Kiwak First Nation. Let's hear from Spencer. Um, I guess just at the beginning of last year, I had two back-to-back -back ACL surgeries coupled with COVID and yeah, just a pretty tough final rehab. And um, I kind of realized if I returned to competition, it would kind of maybe not give me ever give me the opportunity to ride backcountry. So it kind of became this choice of like, you know, what do I want to do more? Do I want to go to another Olympics or do I want to pursue this other side of snowboarding that I've always dreamed of? And um, yeah, so it kind of, kind of came to a head and I just, I realized like I would really regret ending my career not having ventured into the backcountry and, and seen, seeing how I would do out there. You know, Spencer has had a very storied career in slopestyle competition, but seeing her in the backcountry this past season, it seems she truly belongs there. Well, she just embraced it and attacked it, didn't she? You know, she's thrown herself into it. It's been one of the great stories really in women's snowboarding the last year or so. I think she had such a bad experience at the Olympics as well. It really fired her up to kind of try something new in her career, didn't it? And I think it's a common story for a lot of our riders that they come from the competitive background and then transition into backcountry. But these are the people we're featuring. It doesn't work out for everybody. Like, it takes a, a specific type of rider to be able to transition those skills and bring them into the backcountry. That was massive. I think you I mean, we were talking about this before. You forget how big these features are. Oh, yes, Spencer, first spin of the day. Huge as well. Yeah, when we start seeing some of the still photos get dropped after day one, then you start to get a real sense of how large all these hits really are. Full send from Spence there, wasn't it? And you hear that little bit of chatter, uh, some of the breathing, some of the, the snow conditions. This is the first time all of the riders are wearing uh, body pack microphones. Ooh, going down there. Another great thing is that Puck has come on board this year for natural selection, and all of the riders are wearing uh, back protectors. It's better to be safe in that situation, obviously, um, and with consequential course like this in the backcountry, you want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to protect yourself. We got the helmet tap from Spencer, but it looks like that hit uh, got her pretty good. But she did give us the helmet tap, saying she's generally OK. We'll see how this works out for her. Full commitment, though. The two threes going huge. Yeah. She could have played it a lot more conservatively, especially for her first run. Yeah, exactly. She, I mean, it'd be interesting if she's feeling all right, like how she does in the two. And we go back to the top for a veteran of the Jackson Hole natural selection, Hannah Beeman. She is a legend in the backcountry, a Mount Baker local, three times X Games medalist, and honestly a fashion icon. <laughs> Hannah, definitely no stranger to Jackson Hole. She has been a familiar face here for the last two decades, showing up pretty regularly. Let's hear more from Hannah. Last year, natural selection getting third was pretty amazing. I was so excited to put down a run that I was stoked on. And um, yeah, I just was, I was really happy to be a part of the event. And so to get third was just awesome. You know, I haven't podiumed in anything in a while. So it was cool. It was very cool. And Alaska was just a cherry on the top. Like I didn't expect to be going to Alaska. So to get to go up there and and be up there with Zoe and Robin was awesome. And it was just a great experience. I don't think I feel less pressure, but I have a little more confidence and a little more understanding of the course. And that helps, but I feel like the pressure is still there. <laughs> I, think, I think the pressure is felt by everybody, but I think having a little more time on course under my belt is gonna be an advantage for me. But that being said, who knows what's gonna happen out there. You know, last year we talked a lot about bringing the backcountry experience Three, two, into the contest and the riders that had that under their belts. And then of course this year, it adds another layer with having Hana and the two other riders being returners to this event specifically. 
I imagine there's a lot of knowledge being shared from our veteran riders who were here last year to everybody who's showing up for the first time. Hannah kind of seemed pretty calm last night when I spoke to her. I think the line she said was, I know what I can do, so let's see what the course lets me do. Nice calculated approach, isn't it, this? Hana is just such a strong rider, and I think... Oh! oh. Wow. oh. <laughs> Looks like she got a little tail heavy on the landing of that Wildcat. She's still having fun, though. Where Hands in the air. It's party time. A little straightener on one of the smaller features. It is incredible to see as the drone follows the different riders through the course and they're choosing different lines, how many different features there are out there. There's so many little things hidden in the trees. And here's where the audio really shines. Yeah, the rider mic's brilliant on this run. <laughs> That was really well rounded, though, wasn't it? You know, nice three. Holy she started off. Taking a look back at these two runs, I mean, I think what was exciting is that both of these women were really, really pushing the limits of their first runs. Absolutely, yeah, not holding back. Spencer going huge in that first one. Backside three right here. It's all coming down to how well people can handle those landings. Yeah, but as, as we saw in the, in the men though, like as each heat progressed, as each run progressed, people were getting it more and more dialed, were adapting their lines to the conditions, and we're gonna see the same with the women as well. Because right, with this much sun, the speed is not staying consistent throughout the day. So every round, it, there is going to be a bit of that adaptation. It's going to be changing every day. Like the landings are getting more beat out. Like you say, the sun's on it all day. It's going to get stickier. Here we go. So kicking off with Hana's run. See, there you get a really good sense of how big some of those hits really are. Yeah, massive. A little laid back on the tail on that wildcat, but I bet. Hana's going to be rewarded for going upside down right there. I'm like, I'm dialed in. Oh, he doesn't have to go again. <laughs> no, he's good. <laughs> nice, Hana. Called it, Jeff. Hana, all right. Back to the top. Oh, man. And so Spencer will look to that second like run and see if she yeah. can force yeah. the tiebreaker. So we've just got word that, unfortunately, gutted to hear that Spencer O'Brien is not going to take her second run because she has uh, injured her ankle during her first run. We don't have any word specifically, but we are bummed that she will not be dropping. And we will move on to Hannah Beeman. It did look heavy, didn't it? Yes. It did, it did look like she had hurt herself when, when that happened. So she's all right. What do you see that name? That's the first rule of passive aggressive club is never mind. It's not <laughs> so I think this also speaks to Hana and who she is as a rider and individual because she doesn't have to take this run. She won the first one, so she could sit back and wait, but she is going again, which I think is really, really cool. Yeah, she kind of gets a victory lap in the middle of the contest. Yes. <laughs> well, it's going to be good intel, isn't it? I think the more that the more that runs these riders can get under the belt, and the more they can, you know, understand what the snow and the course is asking of them. You know, the the, the more dividends it's going to yield for them as the event progresses. Really. Exactly. I think that's a hundred percent. You can look at this as a, a reconnaissance mission. Yeah, exactly. A recce. A recce, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to go yeah. too tacky on the terms, but yeah. <laughs> and probably kind of nice having a little run through the course where you can kind of shake off some of that pressure and just explore a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if she'd be interested to see if she takes a, a dramatically different line, you know, just to sort of find out a bit more about the course now. Well, starting off, she's not really holding back. She's hitting jumps putting in grabs. It's still a contest run for her. Yep. 
I love when we see this, right? These little pockets of the course that haven't been hit yet. Yeah, Where's all this fresh snow coming from? This yeah, is amazing. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's the eye of a veteran backcountry rider is they're like, okay, let me find these pockets. Yeah. I can suss this out. Yeah, don't get drawn into where everybody else has already gone. She, she's exploring, isn't she? She's kind of, you know, banking it for later, I think. Uh -oh. This is helping out uh, all the other riders, too, right? We're, everybody's getting to see. <laughs> everybody's getting to see these different parts of the course. The, the, the rider mic, I think, is such a great addition this year, isn't it? It's amazing hearing Hannah's, uh, you know, talking to herself down the run. Yeah. <laughs> Proper having a word with herself. Yes. She goes down. It's, I think it really shows us what it's actually like to be riding right now. There's a little less pressure for her on that run, too, wow. so she could open it up a bit. Yeah, let's hope Spencer's all right. It was definitely the heaviest landing of the day, I think.